You know, we've talked about how brutal last year was. Do you think that things could be better in 2023 and how so? Good uh, morning and, and happy new year. So, uh, of course, we hope things are going to be better uh, this year. Um, if we look at the main, um, I, I guess, issues that were driving markets last year, which were interest rates and, and COVID zero in, in China, these are still going to be very important uh, factors this year, but we're at a much, much different stage. So obviously, with, you know, you've mentioned earlier, interest rates are uh, likely to um, reach a terminal rate in the U.S. of around five this year. Um, so we've had most of the gain already. Um, and inflation has mm -hmm. seemed to have peaked, uh, although, you know, may not be a straight line back down. But um, that's uh, a little bit in the rearview mirror. Um, let's see if we can uh, manage the fine line between um, re recession and uh, and uh, a soft landing, but that's uh, something we'll, we'll develop over the next year. And obviously, the situation with COVID zero has uh, done a complete 180. Um, and and uh, you know, China will is opening. China, if we look, let's say six months from now, will be um, where the rest of the world is likely. Um, but it's going to be a very very rough uh, you know f weeks and and months uh, in this uh, exit wave, of which we'll probably never see the, the actual numbers. Hmm. So, yeah, I, I was asking a previous guest about this, Kieran. You know, given just the virus spread in, in China, you, you have more countries kind of adding more testing requirements for, for travelers from China. How, how big of a recovery boost are we expecting from, from the mainland? How is it going to really help markets, you think? I, I would look at it more like a, a normalization. So, like the rest of the world has has got back to normal. Um, the, the you know the short term impact the, the next weeks and uh, maybe two or three months um, it, it's you know could be pretty rocky. Um, but once we have uh, you know China back as a as a co contributing factor to the global economic growth, um, we're going to start to see probably normalization of supply. Uh, change, which is, has been a big problem coming out of COVID, and uh, and especially so in China. Um, so we think we think overall, uh, you know, getting China back uh, into the you know global economic mix um, can be can be very very positive. Uh, it, certainly into the second half of the year. China Tech, in particular, you're seeing a bit of a refocus there. What in particular, and how do you see that playing out? Yeah, so China Tech obviously has has been uh, uh, a little bit of self-inflicted pain, um, which has gone on for a long time. Um, so not only are we seeing the end of the, uh, I guess the the regulatory, uh, you know, regime change, um, and companies have learned to deal with that. We've also seen uh, certainly some of the big companies focus a bit more on uh, shareholder returns, return on equity. Um, we've seen the likes of Tencent distribute some of their investments. Um, to shareholders, um, so this obviously has also a positive impact on on uh, measures like like ROE. Probably there's some uh, regulatory uh, nudging behind the scenes to, to ha make this happen. But overall, if we start to see um, a you know bottoming of the or an end of the the, the tough uh, regulation regulation changes, um, coupled with uh, you know return focus on shareholder returns and shareholder equity and ROE, um, we think that you know possibly you could see. Um, you know, global institutional investors start to edge back into into those uh, large tech platform names in China, um, which uh, which we think could be could could be pretty supportive.